Hello, good afternoon, Mir Kellner from Brain Embassy. You are with us from Tel Aviv in Israel. And it's like the third episode of the series we, we, we have started one year ago um, about, okay, what's the impact of the pandemic on co-working spaces? And we have seen Israel being ahead of us each time. So <laughs> the wave started first and, and then it ended, it ended uh, first as well, and then we always had this small window in the future future that was expecting co-working spaces uh, in, in, in continental Europe. So now there is an additional thing that all the population is vaccinated in Israel. And um, But first of all, let's speak about how things catch up now in your co-working space. But first of all, can you remind us who you are and Brain Embassy's uh, activities? Yeah, so hello, Jamie. Very nice to be here again and to share my experience within the, uh, the co working uh, industry in Israel and uh, Warsaw and in Belgium where we are operating. Uh, the Brain Embassy is the co working brand of Adda Investment and Development, which is a real estate uh, company, which basically means that we are operating. The co uh, the co working uh, services within our own uh, premises uh, or within our own facilities, uh, which make our business model a little bit different. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have one location that we opened exactly a year ago in Tel Aviv. We expanded this space uh, during the Corona time. I will speak about it uh, later. In Warsaw, we are currently operating in four locations. We have another one uh, under construction that uh, is going to be uh, ready at the beginning of 2022. And uh, we are working on another location at the city center. In Antwerp, we are going to open around the summer. So generally, we are open at the moment seven locations, it's going to be eight. And uh, I hope that the future uh, holds us like more uh, expansion. So all those locations uh, were not put on hold during the pandemic. So the, the, the project kept going. So we were open within our all locations uh, all the time. We didn't close it uh, even for a single day. Of course, the restrictions and the situation are different within uh, each country. Uh, for example, in Belgium, it's uh, recommended uh, to work from home. Or oh, it's mandatory to work from home. And when you go to an office, you you can expect that uh, some inspector will come and uh, can give you a ticket. So it's a very challenge to promote your co-working space while there is this kind of the key, uh, restriction from the government. Yeah. In Warsaw, we didn't see this kind of restrictions. So overall, over there, when the uh, let's say after the first wave and after the second wave, uh, when the restrictions were uh, released, we saw improvement in our uh, traffic within the, uh, the locations and uh, we were able to sign some uh, uh, agreements with new customers. But again, events is going really slow because of the restrictions. And it's not usual times. Now, fortunately, situation is getting better in, in Warsaw in terms of number of cases. Uh, percentage of people that uh, got the vaccine is increasing. So I should hope that, uh, let's say, around summer, uh, we will face a different uh, situation. Over here in, in Israel, it's, uh, we're living in a separate world, in a kind of sense of so uh, now, now all the population is vaccinated in Israel, right? Uh, let's say the total population over here is 9 million. We have almost six okay. vaccines. Uh, Israel is a very young country. So we have like 2 point something million of children below 18, which are not getting the shots at the moment. Uh, and the government, you know, uh, the, the Ministry of Health and the government are saying that uh, soon there will be an approval from the FDA to give the vaccines for uh, uh, 
children between 12 and 50 years old, but I don't see the motive of the parents to give uh, the shots to the children because basically the corona, I don't want to say over, yeah, or to, to be sound like an elegant uh, guy, but the numbers are extremely low. I mean, mm -hmm. like extremely low. Very several cases every day, few, I mean, less than 70, maybe 60, 50, 40, depending on the number of tests. But we are testing a lot of people. We are testing like between 20 to 30,000 people every day. I still, uh. still, yeah, and the percentage of the positive results from the total like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 percentage, you know, so it's in a very low number. During the high peak of the pandemic, we had like between 15 to 20 percent positive uh, results from the total test. Now, again, imagine the number 0 0.1 percent or 0 0.2 percent. It's nearly it's so, is there? Do you see still some restriction now in Israel uh, on in any on any level, or is it uh, free so, again fully? Uh, let's say ninety five percent fully open. The cinemas are still closed because all the attractions that involve children, you know, because the children are not vaccinated yet. So it's a little bit. Uh, a challenge to open the mall at the moment. Uh, but for next week, uh, the, the last restrictions that was from a, a, a sports event, for example, uh, they will be fully open. The stadium can be fully booked with people. Next week, we're going to have a football game uh, with 30,000 people. Imagine that. Um, I was sitting in a classroom packed with people all together, you know, it's uh, still uh, obligatory to wear masks, you know, I have my mask over here, but basically most of the people doesn't take it anymore. Outside we don't need to wear it. Uh, but still, this, still the mask is still mandatory in a uh, closed room. Indoor in it's still mandatory officially. But let's say most of the people doesn't work at all because people feel very, very safe, very, very safe. So does it mean, for instance, that uh, events are back in your co-working space now uh, already, or is it too early? Listen, we have a huge demand for events. It's unbelievable. The, de the demand that we see for events, it's a very high level. At the moment, it's still, uh, it's another restriction. So event can be held, uh, uh, for non-vaccinated people, yeah, uh, until uh, uh, 100 people, okay, they are not vaccinated. If you ask everyone to be vaccinated, you can uh, do whatever you want. But um, we are not asking that, you know. Uh, uh, so events are still being held under uh, the capacity of 100 people, but it's a lot. But no. since, what, so what does it mean? Is, is, is plus 50% as, as opposed to usual? Or is it uh, way higher? Is it book call time until 2022 or? No, so we are not booked uh, in advance uh, for months, but we see an increase with each month that we are proceeding. We see an increase of the, the demand of events. And I see that people want to go back to the physical, contact over here at the Brain Embassy. In Adli, we had a, a bank holiday, like two weeks of the month was a bank holiday. And we had our Independence Day. So like three weeks out of the months were holiday time. So it's a, bit, a, it's a challenging month to judge April. In March, basically during March, most the, of the restrictions were released. So May, it's like the months that we are coming back uh, um, to live our normal life as before. We had our first uh, networking event after post-corona uh, networking event over here at the Brain Stream in Tel Aviv. And it was amazing. It was yeah. packed of people, you know, we asked people to register. Um, but, you know,
know, let's say if uh, uh, 20 people registered, you can find during the event maybe 50 or 60 people who will just, you know, uh, keep coming in because the physical contact people, I feel that people were missing the physical contact and the physical communication yeah. with uh, one another. When we spoke a year ago, we mentioned that we are the social creatures. Yeah, we, are, we as a human beings are social creatures, but reality proves it. And uh, people, most of the people, maybe not all of the people, but most of the people are keen for physical contact uh, to be, to gain their uh, normal life again. And so, so um, because one, one, one has question mark there is, is that, okay, once the people get vaccinated, still maybe half of the population remains cautious and say, okay, all right, I'm vaccinated, but still I don't want to go too fast in social interaction with others. And uh, uh, okay, and that actually the, the, the catching up process and, and the res resume of you know, normal activity uh, is slower than one could expect. But what you say is actually not, it's, it's like crushing and people are, you know, can't hold it anymore and they, they, they need to, to get back very fast to normal. So, you know, if you take like the worst case scenario, yeah, and I, I, I see it as an extreme scenario. Let's say there is a concern, okay? Uh, I mean, it's not vanished. Now we are, as you mentioned, maybe 100% of the population can be vaccinated, vaccinated. Uh, but still there is a concern uh, about variants that will come and, uh, and yeah. the vaccine cannot be uh, uh, efficient with them. But you know, until today, it didn't happen with the Indian variant, Brazilian variant, the British variant, the South African variant, because otherwise the situation over here will not uh, be the same as we see. So if you are speaking with pessimistic uh, people, then you can find them all over. Yeah. Also, I had, I had, a, I had a, a chat yesterday with one of my uh, uh, customers over here, and he told me, listen, let's wait another week or two and, and, uh, and see the effect of the Indian variant because it's now expanding. I told him, Come on, if it was expanding, the numbers were much higher. So there is a concern. The airport is not 100% uh, uh, open. Uh, we are not expecting uh, tourists. We will accept them from, I don't know, the end of this month or something like that with the group. So if you want to go abroad, there are restrictions. You need to do a COVID test before and after, you know. So. In this way, we are not back in track uh, yet. But if you look at the domestic market, yeah, uh, traffic at the roads, we didn't see this kind of traffic even before. Why? Because let's say in each given uh, time, there is maybe 20% of the population that are abroad. Yeah. And now everybody is over here. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. There are, a lot, there are a lot of uh, traffic in the roads. Uh, the parking lots are full, you know. There is uh, very, very two good variables to, to see because the roads are packed, the parking lots are packed. People, you can find them in the offices, in the restaurants, in bars, they go outside. So I see it, I see it coming back to normal on steroids. Okay. Okay. So even for the for the offices and for the workplaces. So, are you are you at full full speed now uh, back in in the Ukraine embassy uh, location or yeah no it's we catch up with eighty percent of the normal and okay for the twenty remaining person we we still wait a little bit or no it's everything is back to normal capacity. Let's say we are ninety percent back to our normal capacity. So we are happy with the traffic and we will look forward uh, a month or two. We think we will reach our uh, numbers and our uh, target. And I, 
I hope it will be so. Because um, uh, some comp more and more companies are using the hybrid model of work, let's say. Uh, and if they are using the hybrid model of work, they need the co-working uh, services. So they are coming for uh, you know events, for meeting rooms, they take like the ones who doesn't want to commit and take like even amongst the liability. So they are coming, let's say they take their team, they come in for a, a team meeting and they stay over here and it went well. So they are coming again and they are coming again. And then they call us, they say, okay, maybe we will take like a, a membership for the open space for some of our uh, a team, okay, they are taking that, and then they call us, they say, okay, maybe we need like a small office for us. We are 10 people at the company, but we will take an office for five people, and then they see that more and more people are coming, so they are growing. Um, so we see that. We also see a lot of companies that the COVID basically made a very good thing for the business. And yeah, they were yeah. expanding throughout the year. Uh, we have one uh, tenant over here, one customer, used to have 15 employees. Then we need a bigger unit. It took a unit for 20 employees. Now it's 70 within just a couple of months. And in which, in which sector? What does it do? Uh, so it's dealing with like... Uh, uh, is working with the hospitals. He has like technology for uh, medicare, uh, some medicare devices or uh, okay. deliver software and hardware. So his business is booming at the moment. <laughs> I yeah. can figure it out. So, yeah. so, and and what about what you just said? Um, do you see a difference in the kind of leads? That are coming in uh, as opposed to one year. We already discussed a little bit about it, but now that we are one year later, uh, companies have matured their reflection about it. So, does it as it as it change? Uh, do you see different profiles, or and we, do you see the confirmation of the expectation we had that meaning that corporates and other kind of companies now consider flex workspace as uh, an important part of their overall flexible um, remote workspace or overall workspace policy? So what we see more and more that we didn't see uh, before the COVID is, uh, for example, companies, they have X employees. Before, they wanted to have like X workstation, like the same amount of workstations to equal the amount of workstation to their employees. Yes, sometimes they took even a bigger space. So if they have X employees at the moment, they took a space of X.2 uh, X in order to enable them to grow the uh, team in the near future. But at the moment, what we see more and more companies that uh, um, are trying to have a different so if they have like an X number of employees, they take 0 0.7 or 0.6 X number of workstations. And we are enabled them, we give them like access cards, yeah? And we agree with them that in each specific time, there will be only this 0 0.6 X uh, uh, employees coming to the offices. So there are companies like that, and basically what they are doing, they are uh, combining working from home, yes, and working from the office. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we see from some top companies that this X is growing because they start with like 0 0.66 and now they are 0 0.8 because more and more people are going to come back to the offices. But the good part, if you look at the co-working industry, that previously the majority of them took a conventional lease. They didn't use co-working before. So they went out from conventional lease and now want to have uh, the offices within the co-working places. So basically we see an increase of the demand uh, in our products. Yeah, because we see a transformation from the conventional lease to the co-working. 
we as a real estate company, yes, other investment and development can enjoy both worlds. Why? Because we are welcoming our prospects with open, with open arms. If you want to have your own space, your dedicated space, like in the conventional lease agreement, you have a stable company, you can have it, right? If you want a hybrid model, so we can use like a smaller size space in addition to the co-working place, good. Let's have it. If you want to use only the co-working place. Uh, and this is something you def definitely um, see totally connected with the year we had with all of a sudden hybrid walking becoming something uh, robust in terms of implementation and integration within the operation of, a, of companies. That's, that's, that's something that is the, the outcome of this situation that to you, there is a direct connection now that you, you can confirm or no, it was just, we had those kind of players before, but now it's uh, just that we have a, f a few more. Um, I think that it's a growing trend, you know what I mean? It's a growing trend, uh, and I also think that it's good for our industry. The industry will expand, and the need for the flexibility um, uh, will increase. And take another factor that, uh, you know, if you want to decorate the space, your own space, like we are decorating our co-working space, we need to put like capital uh, uh, expenses with a high number of uh, capital expenses, like maybe 1,000 euro per square meter, you know, minimum, you can have it more. And we, we save you this money, right, by offering you a plug and play uh, model of work. And um, Again, as I mentioned before, I see people as a social creatures. We are, we are keen for the physical contact. And once we, people came back to the offices, more and more people are want to go out from the working from home model and joining uh, the offices. But, but, but the, the thing, the, the idea that indeed we have this hybrid working, so far if you read articles and things like that, we, we still are seeing this idea that an uh, employee will work two days a week at the head office and three, three days a week at home or, or tr three days in the office. Flexible workspace is not necessarily part of the equation yet when you read about those articles and literature about it. Um, how, do you, how do you see brand embassy positioning itself in that you see more like okay the head office will be at brand embassy or do you see brand embassy being one of the three pillars in this equation uh that we are going to see so it's it's early to say Johnny. okay it's early to say we are not but you enough in this post-covid uh, situation yeah so maybe in our next call i'll be you know, wiser in this term. But what I see at the moment, again, it's prospect that we didn't see before. Yes. Uh, so a lot of companies like terminated their own leases during the, the past year, and they are now available at the market. They are looking for opportunities. And when they are looking for opportunities, it's an opportunity for us in each company manage its uh, human resources in a different way. Some, for some uh, companies, what you mentioned works. Yeah. So some of their employees working like two days at home. But take into consideration another thing, you know, we live in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, like any major uh, city, the apartments are pretty small. And if you want to arrange yourself a workstation in your apartment, uh, chances are you need to move. Yeah. Uh, and if you have children, okay, children are back to school, are back to kindergarten, fortunately everything is okay, but they are coming back. And you are in, in the middle of work, and you are, if you are working with uh, uh, abroad or with United States, we have a lot of companies working with United States during the afternoon, they cannot live and work at the same place with their children, you know, because children came back from school, you are working from home, you know, you want to avoid that. Yeah. You want to have like a professional workspace environment. 
in the co-working industry, we of course also in that, but I believe the co-working industry offers a professional workspace environment. And this is what people are look like. If they want to get dressed, would you know to go out from their uh, pajamas and flip-flops and uh, come back to a, to a decent place and they can meet people, get engaged, and have like a professional uh, own place to work for. And last question we are having at the end. What about the uh, social distancing and the facility? Is it still something you have to pay attention to? Uh, it gives addicts to a lot of spaces and a lot of care or it, now that people are vaccinated in Israel, they don't care. They, they are all right sitting next to one another again. That's over. So, you know, we had a period of time. We are a very, in the Middle East, we are a very warm people. You know, for us not to shake hand or to hug or like to give the physical contact, it's very hard in terms of culture. Yeah. No. Uh, so it was very hard for us to accept like the social distancing, but we did it. But now again, people see each other, you know, they're shaking hands. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> to each other. And you know, people are feeling more and more confident with the situation. And when they feel confident with the situation, they are losing all their barriers. So, so no more, no more plexiglass and uh, sanitizer everywhere and uh, UV lights. Uh, you can find them, you know, but few, few. That's it. So even from that perspective, you are back to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I believe, I believe so. I believe so. Wonderful. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing you know views from from another world for the moment for us <laughs> like our future window on the future future as we said hopefully uh, europe will be vaccinated as a, at a as high level as israel and um, by the summer uh hopefully then but it's very interesting to see that things actually got are getting back to normal faster than we even dreamed of uh once the situation is 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 fixed awesome we hope to see you again in, uh, in vienna uh, we we tell about it every time I, i hope the next podcast we will have with you is not to tell about the fourth wave <laughs> and uh but definitely the for uh, to speak more and more about the growth and the perspectives and uh, everything good is, which is coming up for for the industry looking forward Johnny, for sure. <laughs> thank you near thank you again for for everything for, for the testimonial and uh take care Take care. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.